Hey everyone, we are really excited to share some big news with you. For the second year running, Cadence has been ranked number one for accessibility among page builders by Equalize Digital. And this goes hand in hand with our mission to not only give you tools that create beautiful and fast websites, but websites that are truly inclusive of everyone. Accessibility matters because it ensures that everyone, no matter how they're browsing the web, can access your content. From better navigation to clearer structure and focus states, small improvements can really make a difference. We've linked below the full report from Equalize Digital, so be sure to check that out. But now I'm going to hand it over to Ben Rittner, who's going to walk you through all the new accessibility features that we at Cadence have just launched. Hey everyone, we recently did a bunch of accessibility work at Cadence, and I wanted to go through a few of those things and explain like how they worked and why, and maybe this would help you build more accessible sites and just learning like what are the changes we made and the nuances of that. Because on the surface, nothing big has changed, nothing big has happened, but there's a lot of little tweaks that we can talk about, a lot of little things that, that do add up and make your site more accessible. So one of the things that was really interesting that I kind of like pushed back against when I first heard like, hey, we should change this, because we hired a third party accessibility expert to go through a lot of our products and give us advice and stuff. And one of them is with the testimonials the feedback we got was that the testimonial itself should be in a block quote. And that always was interesting to me because I always thought of like block quotes as being something you're like quoting a source, even, and this is quoting a person and you're the source, but this actually helps the screen readers and things like that when you're going through with these accessibility tools to give the right context to what's being said. So it comes across as a quote from somebody else. So we've updated the markup in the testimonial block to actually output a block quote, which isn't visually shown, but does affect the markup and how screen readers and things like that process that and read it out. Another slight change is with the links. So if you look here, you can see that the link, when I hover over it, the underline actually drops down just a little bit. And what's interesting about that is when you know, they've, as they've updated what makes things and helps things to be more accessible over time, they've indicated that like you should show some kind of indication that you're hovering over a link. And color is not a good enough indicator of the fact that you're hovering over it because essentially links in a paragraph, a long paragraph, can be close together because paragraph text is generally close together. Whereas like when you think about like normal elements on a page, there's at least some distance between the other elements. So when you're hovering over something, if there's a, a slight change, you can kind of tell you're hovering over it. But with links in a paragraph, it's actually really important that the user knows which link they're hovering over. And if you're slightly vision impaired and things like that, having some kind of indicator other than the actual color changing just a little bit is necessary. And so we came up with this, this idea of having the underline just slightly change. And that gives a clear indicator that you're hovering over that link and that, you know, you're obviously like the mouse will change and stuff, but that slight indicator was something we just added. And I actually really like it. I actually think it's cool. Um, visually too. A couple other things like when you're tabbing through our sliders, if you've got autoplay on, so the slider will like tick through every so many seconds, you can now pause that. So that's like a nice add on is like the autoplay will pause. And then kind of an interesting one, if you're on the pagination, you can see right now that the blue hover shows that my uh, keyboard is has selected, I've tabbed to it. I'm using my keys to switch through the slides what that does is it switches the slide visually but if i'm on a screen reader and i need to go read the captions bef previously you would have had to um, tab or scroll back into the slider to get to that selected slide because that pagination comes after like as you tab through if you think about tabbing through you go like arrows and then the content of the slide and then the pagination at the bottom so now we've added a way where you can hit enter or space bar and that actually dumps you into the current slide so if you're on a screen reader it would read out that caption without you having to tab in reverse which is kind of a weird motion the shift tab so little things like that again they, they make a difference when you're on a screen reader and things like that Another thing is like our blog block and even our archives on our like cadence 
archive pages and blog pages and stuff like that. We switched to using a list style, which is just, again, this is like HTML changes that you don't visually see, but they help the a screen reader know how many items are in a list. So when it comes up to a blog like this, where it's showing like the latest, it's going to say there's two items in the list. And then it'll go in and read first article on and on. And so just those little things like that to kind of indicate to someone who can't visually see that there's two items, it's going to help them to know. And those kinds of things, they all do add up significantly. So some of the changes we made, another one is that like a screen reader, so an image is generally a linked. We find that to make the most sense. People click. I mean, if you look at the heat maps, they click on this and they click on the title and then they click on read more. But that can add an excessive amount of links that the screen reader will read out. It will say like, hey, this is a link. And then it'll talk about the image. And then it'll say the title and this is a link. And then it'll say read more and this is a link. And so it's like a lot of repetitive link calling out. But in the latest update, we've hidden this link from screen readers so that there's less of that redundant link calling out. So it talks about the image that's being there and then onto the content and the, you know, the category and then the title and then read more. So... Just slight cleanups there with the markup. Another thing, and I mean, we, you know, there's a lot of like little contrast things we changed, a little making sure that the area roles were right for certain things, like our search modal that pops out and making sure that all of those connections were good. I mean, we even got to the details of like, if you hit escape, making sure that we're catching the focus and putting it on the right element, all that kind of stuff. So, Lots of little things, don't need to go into all of that, but one other interesting thing that came up in, in our testing is just if you submit a form, previously we showed the errors here right under each item, but again, if you approach this from a, like let's say you have a long form, you're approaching it from a screen reader perspective, we've added this new section here where it tells you like, hey, fix these errors to proceed, and it again, a list item, so it'll say there's three items in the list, and then links to each one so this is a link to this field so that way someone could go right in and see oh there's three different places and not just running into this first one updating it and then hitting submit again they would know they need to go to all of them so little little things like that they add up and that's the kind of thing that we're really trying to go after at cadence is to make sure you can get the it, it as most accessible as possible and some gotchas that always can come up that I'll just reference real quick. One of them is with colors. That's always a gotcha that you got to watch out for. So making sure that like this text has enough contrast against this background. That's key so that way it's visually you can see it if you're vision impaired. So always making sure that when you're setting up your colors, you're setting them up to be have enough contrast ratio. Another gotcha that is is interesting that we learned in this is that when you're setting up a mobile header, making sure that all the content shows up in the mobile header that would be in your desktop header, that is important for the end user. So in this case here, if I am using a cart or I'm using a search to make sure that the search is also in the mobile header, it doesn't need to be in the top, it can be in the pop out nav area. Or like a button is a good example of this. Like make sure that button shows up in that pop out nav area. And that's something you could do in Cadence. You can set up your mobile headers however you want. But that's like key. You want to give that, make sure that your main stuff is visible to all users on all devices. And that's an accessibility thing. There's a quick, quick, like here's what we've been changing and here's what we've been doing. And some of the like nitty gritty details as well as like some tips. So hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching and we really hope that you enjoy exploring all these new accessibility features that we have just launched. And if you're looking for a page builder that is inclusive of everyone, then be sure to check out our Cadence plans by going to either the link in our bio or the link in our screen now.